Hi, in this episode I'll be showing you how to make arm panels like the ones you see in Chapter 2 reconstructing themselves, and also the ones seen in tests like in PTI. There are timestamps on screen right now if you want to skip to a specific section. First we're going to create panels that repair themselves. First create a new entity and make it a prop dynamic. You can find the model we want by searching arm64. I'm going to use this one, but there is also a rusty version of this model if you want to use that. Now you're going to want to find the animation you want. There are a lot, if you want a specific animation you've seen in Portal 2, you can decompile the respective map and see what animation is used, otherwise you can browse through this list. For this for example, I'm going to use PowerUp A01. We can preview it in the menu by moving this slider. For naming, I tend to name mine with the name of the animation, then underscore arm, and if I have multiple of them then I would add a number to the end. I find this helps a lot, especially when you have a large amount of arms in a map, and you usually will. To add the panel, we want to set the default animation to the idle end version of the animation. To make it serious that animation in Hammer, select the animation in the model page, then click apply. This only affects Hammer, it won't change anything in game. Now create a 64x64 64 64 brush on the front of the panel, make it 2 units thick. For texturing I use a 64x64 64 64 metal panel texture, I also make the sides the same texture. You can use other textures here on the sides, such as the square beam textures, however I just tend to use the same ones as the tile. And for the back I'm using this grey frame texture. Use Ctrl T to turn it into a funk detail, then turn it into a funk brush. I use the same naming convention as the R model, but this time I end with brush instead of R. Then set the parent to the R model. I'm also going to create a wall for this panel to be fit into, but normally you create the wall first, then cut out a hole. Now create a new entity and make it a logic auto. Add the output on map spawn, name of your brush, set parent attachment, maintain offset, panel attach. Add another output on map spawn, name of your arm, set default animation, then the idle version of your animation. In this scenario, for that, all I have to do is copy the first part of the name of my arm, then add idle to the end. Also set the delay to 0.01 seconds. Create another new entity and make it a logic relay. Give it a unique name, I'm calling mine arm anim lr. Add the output on trigger, name of your arm, set animation, then the animation name which I can just copy. Then create another new output, this time using set default animation, then the idle end version of the animation, using a delay of 0.01 seconds so it doesn't override the animation. This next bit is only for if your arm is no longer visible once the animation is complete, but for optimization, we can delete the arm after the animation. First we need to know the time to send the outputs. To get this, go to animation in the model page and use the slider to go to the last frame. Divide this number by 30 and that's the time in seconds the animation lasts. In this case, mine is 8.3 seconds. Now in the logic relay, add another output to the brush using clear parent, and I'll use a delay of 8.4 seconds. I'm adding an extra 0.1 seconds because I'd rather not risk sending this output whilst the animation is still running. Add another output to the arm to kill it with a delay of 0.01 seconds after the clear parent output, in this case that's 8.41 seconds. To get the arm to move, all you need to do is trigger the logic relay. I'm going to use a button, but arms are more commonly triggered by trigger brushes or dialogue. In game it should look like this. And you can see it deletes itself afterwards. Now I'm going to show ambient arms. Arms don't have to be a one time use, they can have a constant presence in a map, making it feel more dynamic and alive. One example I'll show off are these dangling arms. So create a new arm model and go to the model page and search dangle. There's quite a few variations, some more alive than others, some more still, you can pick whichever one you want. I'm using dangle ceiling 01. Once again using the same naming convention with the animation followed by arm. Now normally you don't actually see these arms with a panel attached to the end, so instead you could just set the animation as the default and end it here, but I'm going to show you the process of adding panel to it. First look, bind pose as the in home animation. Now I'm going to create a basic ceiling for better demonstration. You want to align the arm so that it's just below the bottom of the ceiling like this. Next create the brush like we did before following all the same processes, however this time in the logic auto we set the default animation of the arm to the main one but still 0.01 seconds later again. Make sure the default animation in the arm is set to bind pose, then in game it should work. Next I'm going to show you the skin for the arm model. The arm model has three skins, blue lights, no lights and red lights. For the arm that pulls itself into the wall I'm going to have it start using the lights off model to show that it's deactivated, then when the animation begins I'll switch to the blue lights model to show it coming back to life, for the dangling arm I'll use a red light to show that it's malfunctioned. If you want you can also use a logic timer to make these lights flash on and off by switching between the skins. Here is an example of something I made recently using many of these methods, combining ambient arms, arms that pull themselves back into place and all making use of skins. Now I'm going to show you how to make a 4x4 angled panel like the ones in PTI. Again, create a new entity and make it a prop dynamic. Search the keyword 4 panel into the model browser to find this model. There is also a glass variant but I won't be using that. Make sure it's positioned correctly, if you're unsure about the rotation you can check the animations in the model page to make sure your model is rotated correctly. 
In this instance, I'll be using the ramp 45 degree open animation. So once again, I'm going to copy that and make it the name. Make sure hold animation is set to yes. Once again, we create a two unit thick brush on the front of the arm model. Same process as before, but in this instance, I'm going to use a portable texture. However, I will note that not all arm models use the panel attach as the parent attachment point. Some models may instead use panel top. If you don't know, you can check by loading up the model viewer and finding that model. Then go to the attachments menu and you should see what the name of the attachment point is. In this instance, the 4x4 model also uses panel attach. After setting the parent attachment of the brush, add another output in the logic auto to the panel model which sets the animation to the one you choose. In this instance, that's the ramp 45 degree open with a delay of 0.01 seconds. And add another output to the panel model which uses set playback rate with a parameter override of negative 1 and a delay of 0.02 seconds. Playback rate is the speed at which an animation moves, and negative 1 is normal speed in reverse. The model does have a close animation which will also make the ramp close, however using playback rate is much more flexible and more professional than using those animations. This is an example of what can happen if you use those animations. Meanwhile, playback rate looks like this. Back to making the panel, I'm going to use a floor button to toggle the ramp. The button will have the outputs on press, panel model, set playback rate 1, and on unpressed, panel model, set playback rate negative 1. In game it should work now, but we also need to add clipping to it so nothing can fall inside. We create a new invisible brush just beneath the panel brush with the same width and length but about 96 units deep. We make a cut from the top to the bottom about one third of the way to the middle. Make sure you're making this cut in the opposite direction that the ramp faces when it's pushed out. Next turn it into a funk brush, set its parent to the R model and give it a unique name. Then I add an output in the logic auto to this clipping brush with the set parent attachment maintain offset to panel attach. In game it should now all work. Something else I'll notice is that you can use these rail models as structural support for the R models. You don't have to include them in every scenario, only scenarios where it doesn't make much sense without them. For example, this 4x4 panel uses them as you can very clearly see that part of the model when it's open, and without them it would look like it was floating. However, this arm here that gets pulled into the wall doesn't really need it, as it does look like it gets connected to the bottom of this panel, and that area of the arm is also just a lot more hidden. This is all I'm going to explain how to make in this video, but there is a lot more you can do with arm panels. Arm panels aren't just used for repairing purposes, they can be used for construction too. There are animations which can simply push a panel out or rotate it. Perhaps the best use of panels I've seen in the workshop would be in an impromptu adjustment by Evan Incarnate, also known as Joe Fish. It's a short but excellent map which I want to quickly show off the panels in. I honestly, truly didn't think you'd fall for that. I should say that something like this would take a lot of expertise and time to make, but it's still an excellent example of what can be achieved when using these arm panels. If you see a use of panels in a map in Portal 2 or on the workshop that you like and want to use, but don't know the animation name or how it's done, you're always able to decompile the map using BSP Source, a software which lets you decompile maps from a BSP file. I'll leave a link in the description. Anyway, I hope this helps, and if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave a comment. See ya.